How did Jay-Z build his empire? Let's talk about that in this video. Many of you have been asking for this video and some other billionaires, but I wanted to do more than just a financially free video. I appreciate your patience. Let's dive into Jay-Z's empire. Starting with some background, Jay-Z, born Sean Carter, is a music legend, entrepreneur, and business investor. Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, Jay-Z always had an interest in business, especially when first looking up to professional athletes and and admiring that they found a way to get paid for what they were good at. Jay-Z attended George Westinghouse High School at the same time as DMX, Busta Rhymes, and the Notorious B.I.G. Busta Rhymes actually has talked about a battle rap that went down between himself and Jay-Z and Hove was victorious. He grew up with these legends and developed his craft in order to reach a level to get paid at what he was good at. The love for both music and business pushed Jay-Z ahead to where he would make his dream a reality. Over his lifetime, he built the skills he needed to capitalize on success for his eventual debut classic, Reasonable Doubt. Jay-Z was 26 at the time and had a vision for the empire he was going to build. When you look at Jay-Z's career, you can see the evolution of himself with the influence of jazz -O on the song Originators to his 444 album. With these evolutions is where we can see his investments grow. To get the money he needed for investments, he needed to get paid for what he does well and that was music. Going into music, Jay-Z has released 16 plus albums, 14 of those have gone number one, and 13 of those have gone platinum. In total, he has had 125 million album sales worldwide. It is important to note that when Jay-Z became president of Def Jam in 2004, in that deal he got ownership of his catalog masters. Today, Jay-Z's catalog is valued at 75 million. Album sales need to be making hundreds of millions of dollars year after year for that high value of a catalog. That's not the only way he made money through music. In 2013, for his album Holy Grail, Jay-Z and Rock Nation struck a deal with Samsung to release the album for $20 million. In that deal, Samsung bought $5 million of album copies to give to Samsung Galaxy users for free. He was getting paid just for releasing music, not even including album sales. Touring also brings in tens of millions. With the connections and influence that Jay-Z has, he signed a touring deal with Live Nation Entertainment. Focusing this on touring is important because that is a massive way that artists bring in income and Jay-Z can have that input. In just two months of his 444 tour, he grossed 48.7 million, which once again is an example of the influence that Jay-Z has had throughout his career. A verse from Jay-Z also can range from 250,000 to 1.5 million. Now that is getting paid for perfecting your craft like the athletes he looked up to. Now that we have talked about music, I can't forget about his extensive label history. Jay-Z was a co-founder for his record label, Rockefeller, in 1994, alongside Dame Dash and Kareem Biggs Burke. This was founded after years of Jay-Z struggling to find a record deal. At the time, it was a lot harder to make it independently, but the three knew they had something special. Jay-Z built a powerhouse on his label, including one of my personal favorites, Memphis Bleak. In 1997, the label sold 50% ownership to Def Jam for $1.5 million. Getting this deal with Def Jam would give Rockefeller the push marketing-wise needed to fully bring the name up to what it became. It would also prepare and set Jay-Z up for opportunities down the road. From 1997 through 2004, Rockefeller continued to grow in album sales with each release under the label. Between that time, Jay-Z alone sold 22 million album sales. They also picked up billionaire Kanye West, who had 3.5 million sales in just the one year before the label fully sold. In 2004, Rockefeller sold the rest of the label to Def Jam for $10 million. Like I mentioned earlier, this closing would bring Jay-Z the title of Def Jam president and CEO. Jay-Z would carry these titles for three years until stepping down in 2007. During that time, he was still releasing music and making money from that income stream. His salary per year was estimated to be in the eight-figure range to run the label. Jay-Z used this opportunity once again to learn what he needed to advance his career, which was his reasoning for stepping down. Live Nation was not just a touring deal that came later on in his career, but was also the stepping stone for building his new label, 
Rock Nation in 2007. Signing this deal would bring $150 million to Jay-Z's pockets and $5 million in seed funding for this new music venture. Jay-Z had this opportunity set up for him from what he built at running two labels and the influence he has around the world. In 2007, this was right after his album American Gangster, which sold 1.5 million copies. Two years after starting Rock Nation, Jay-Z released The Blueprint 3. Rock Nation has developed into more than just a music label with different arms for investing, music management, sports management, and more. Throughout my channel, I have talked about the different artists who are under management from Rock Nation, and that includes ASAP Ferg, Megan Thee Stallion, Bobby Shmurda, and more. Some of these situations are getting artists out of bad record deals. Through these different revenues, Jay-Z grew Rock Nation from a 5 million seed investment to a $140 million company. When it comes to Jay-Z and his record label experience, the massive income coming in from running labels and just the music brought him the business Business ventures he needed to take his net worth to 1.4 billion. Let's get into Jay-Z's entrepreneurship ventures. Before I get into investments, I want to cover Jay-Z's entrepreneurship ventures because it shows his business mind and how he made a lot of money. One of the first that comes to mind is his clothing line, Rockaware. This clothing brand was started in 1999 and rose in scale to be having sales reach 700 million per year. Growing the brand to that value brought him the opportunity to sell for $204 million in cash in 2007. This is all going down during the beginnings of Rock Nation. Jay-Z already had the money to start up another successful label, but selling Rockaware was a good move to get that cash to be put somewhere else. What makes this deal even better is that the company that bought Rockaware went on to sue Jay-Z for copyright infringement for a Rock Nation and MLB collaboration. Jay-Z went on to counter based on accounting malpractice and struck a deal for partial ownership of the brand for 15 million selling for 204 million and then buying back for 15 is an amazing move. In 2003, Jay-Z was the co-founder of the nightlife club locations 4040. The luxury sports bar was first opened in New York, but would go on to opening a total of six locations across the United States. Currently, three locations are still open. Over the years, 4040 has continued to renovate locations to keep up with the brand name, which keeps them successful. Nightclubs typically have a net profit margin between 10 and 15%, which means that 4040 nets around 62,000 per month from the 415,000 monthly revenues, according to Forbes. Jay-Z was growing these different income streams throughout the height of his career, which continued to open doors for him. Jay-Z was also a part of the creation of the 2006 luxury champagne company, Armand de Brignac, or known as Ace of Spades. This 50% ownership would turn into 100% ownership from the development of the company that led to long-term growth for 10 plus years. The Ace of Spades brand comes from the luxury bottle that sells for 280 plus. In February 2021, Jay-Z sold 50% of the company to LVMH Wine and Moat Hennessy for 300 million. What can be found between Jay-Z's ventures is the luxury brand that is promoted. They put a focus in quality and position the brand to be the popular luxury brand. The promotion directly from Jay-Z also came with a big help. Continuing off the theme of luxury brands comes with Jay-Z's cannabis company, Monogram. Monogram builds off the luxury brand with the packaging that each product comes in and the quality strains. This company was launched back in 2020 and so far has been successful. Monogram is a part of a bigger deal which involves a larger cannabis parent company, Calvia. Jay-Z is now the chief visionary officer of Calvia, which puts him in a great position to grow the parent company as well as his individual business, Monogram, throughout California and beyond. As the cannabis industry continues to grow over the next few years, Monogram and Calvia look to take market share. Jay-Z has a long list of entrepreneurship ventures in multiple industries, but there is an even longer list in his diverse investment portfolio that I'm excited to get into. Going into investments, one that needs to be covered is his investment and growth in the streaming platform Tidal. Jay-Z invested in the audio and video streaming platform in 2015 for $56 million. Since then, he has grown the platform through exclusive releases, marketing, in artist payments. By artist payments, Tidal is known for paying out artists more per stream than any other platform. Tidal does have a larger price point 
but once again going for that luxury feel. In May of 2021, Jay-Z sold majority stakes in Tidal for $297 million to Square, now known as Block. What makes this deal even better is that he still has some ownership of the company as the larger pair company now has a push. With Block now looking to get into the blockchain space, that will have some influence on Tidal as Jack Dorsey has already talked about those plans. Jay-Z tends to represent artists and he did that with the pay on Tidal. The luxury brand influenced the price point, which creates more room for higher artist returns. In six years, he turned this company into a 240 million net return on investment. In 2018, Jay-Z co-founded his own venture capitalist firm, Mercy Venture Partners, with former Rock Nation CEO, Jay Brown, and venture capitalist, Larry Marcus. The firm currently manages manages 600 million in assets, which shows the grip that Jay-Z has on the investing world. The investing firm has a diverse portfolio in many different industries, ranging from Rihanna's Savage Fenty to Perch Credit, which is a credit repair company. Jay-Z has also had a major payout when it comes to his investment in Uber. In 2011, Jay-Z invested 2 million into Uber. In 2019, when Uber went public, it is estimated that Jay-Z's investment is now worth 70 million. If you think that is good, beyond brought in 300 million from her uber investments even though jay-z has a liquor brand of his own that did not stop him from investing in the luxury alcohol brand do say i could not find out how much he originally invested in the company but as of 2019 his stake in the company is now valued at 100 million taking over multiple companies in the same industry is how jay-z captured more market share and capitalized on the success of the luxury brand it is also worth mentioning that jay-z's real estate portfolio is valued at 50 million which includes multiple homes falling in line with real estate comes an investment to the rent to own home company landis technology the the premise of this company is to buy homes for future owners who cannot afford the house or qualify for a mortgage. Then the company rents it to the future owner while they build the credit and funds they need to purchase the house. This investment is solving real world issues that many people face today. Overall, when it comes to investments, Jay-Z is widely diverse through his personal portfolio and in Mercy Ventures Partners portfolio. Jay-Z is known to talk about his art collection, he has also inspired others to build up their collection like West Side Gun. Jay-Z's current collection is worth 70 million and growing as he continues to add to it. His love for buying pieces of art started in 2008 when he first would talk about building his collection. For me, I am interested to seeing how this grows over time and what it will be worth in the next 10 years. This leads me to the question, what is next for Jay-Z? He does not release music as often, but I think we will continue to get more albums from him. He continues to drop top tier features, like his most recent one with Pusha T. I think we will continue to see Rock Nation grow, whether it is in music, sports, or newer ventures. I am most interested in the management deals because that has been Jay-Z's priority in both music and sports lately. I think there is a lot of potential for his cannabis company, Monogram. Even though Jay-Z is not the majority owner in title anymore, I think we can still see him grow that company through his investment from Block. Going forward, I think we will see a lot more investments in his personal portfolio and his venture capitalist firm, Mercy Venture Partners. Currently, Jay-Z is estimated to have a net worth of $1.4 billion, and what is next? is 2 billion. What is the takeaway from Jay-Z? Bringing continuous quality products to the market is how Jay-Z became successful. Music released was top quality. Music artists signed were top quality. Many luxury companies that were started or invested in bring in top quality products to the market. Many people think having the lowest price will attract more customers, but that is not always the case. Building yourself market share in luxury industries produces greater returns. If you're going to charge a luxury price though, it must be backed up, similar to Jay-Z's Armand de Brignac. Bringing quality products to the market gives more power to the owner when it comes to pricing, which in turn affects the whole business. Jay-Z understood this and implemented it in his entrepreneurship and investing ventures. In summary, Jay-Z was the first hip-hop billionaire. It is really beyond that with his own venture capitalist firm and the music empire he built up. Jay-Z continuously involves and we hear that in his music. His catalog is worth 75 million. He made millions from the countless hits 
and the 100 million plus album sales. Jay-Z navigated the music industry to gain experience through different positions and labels which would only push his entrepreneurship ventures further. He has successfully run three labels and has expanded Rock Nation to more than a label with sports and music management. Jay-Z has multiple entrepreneurship ventures like his nightclubs to luxury champagne. When reflecting, it comes at no surprise that Jay-Z would reach billionaire status with the mastery of his craft and the drive he has for each endeavor. Whether it's building up his own business or investing in one, he takes control of the market through a luxury brand which in turn brings in higher revenue. We see that with almost every venture talked about in this video. When Jay-Z was young, he looked up to professional athletes on getting paid for what they're good at. Jay-Z did just that and built an empire for himself along the way. And that is how Jay-Z built his empire. I hope you found this video informational. Please leave a like and subscribe as well as let me know how I should talk about next. I appreciate everyone who recommended Jay-Z. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.